So I'm telling them why I'm excited about the field that I'm in, why I got into the field that I'm in, and also explaining to them maybe why they should care about planetary science, why it's relevant to them, why it's really important that we think about issues around planetary science, because one day we might be hit by an asteroid, and if we didn't see it coming, then uh, that's us completely gone. So. so geology and geophysics, lots of rocks. Lots of rocks. My entire undergraduate degree was filled with rocks. My life is still filled with rocks, just slightly different kinds of rocks. So not only is it just looking at these rocks and going, hey, cool, it's kind of pretty, we can figure out what the structure of our Earth is. So that's using the physics of rocks. So for example, if you were not able to drill beneath your feet for whatever reason, how could you possibly tell what's there? So one of the ways that we can tell what's there is using waves, so we put a pulse into the Earth, and that travels as a wave, it might hit a layer and be bounced back. However long that takes to return to the surface tells us what material is beneath our feet. Because the different rocks, uh, the waves would travel at different speeds through different materials. So that's one of the ways we can use geophysics. We also have oil and gas industry, who are really, really, really interested in having geos on their team, or geologists, I should say because they want to know where they should drill. Because if they were just going along going, oh, we might find some oil here, oh, not here, oh, we'll just go here, or oh, not here either. They could have days and days and days, weeks, months, years, and eventually go bust because they haven't found any oil. So a geologist would be able to tell them where exactly they need to drill. And the part that I'm most interested in, of course, is planetary science. So I love Earth, I really do, and I don't, study other planets because I find the Earth boring. There's just a lot of people working on rocks from Earth. For example, if we have um, a giant sort of inflatable beach balls worth of knowledge about the Earth, comparatively, we know about a grape size amount about Mars. We know, I don't know, the area of a pinhead about asteroids. And we know a, like a, a basically a particle of dust about comets. We know so little about the rest of our solar system, and yet it's so much bigger than we are. So planetary science could be the surface of another planet. It's also what the planet is made of, so things we can't see from the surface and from telescopes and images we've taken, and also figuring out what's happened to that over its lifetime. So there's lots of reasons why you might care about planetary science. One of the main ones that I think of is security. So. We're a tiny, tiny planet in a huge solar system. There's an asteroid belt all around us. Asteroids come towards Earth all the time, but they're typically the size of your fist. What's going to happen if they are the size of the UK? Goodbye, Earth. <laughs> Goodbye, sweet world. Um, so that, to me, is quite important. If we didn't know an asteroid was coming and we didn't know that it was going to impact Earth tomorrow, you know, we might plan our lives differently. We might be able to do something about it. NASA has got people on it, don't stress. Um, but that's one of, one of the many reasons why we might care about planetary science. The way that I do that, I'm part of a research team called the Desert Fireball Network, or Fireballs in the Sky. We basically take cameras off the shelf, normal, like, slightly fancy cameras, I suppose, but they're just off the shelf. We put them in a box so that they're protected from the dust, from the heat, um, from condensation overnight. And they take photos all night, every night, and if we are lucky, we get to see one of these, which is a shooting star or a fireball. So what's actually happening here is we have a rock that's come from an asteroid, from a moon, from a planet, and come towards Earth, and it's come, come into our atmosphere. The reason we can see that is because it's burning. And we have to figure out where on Earth it has landed. And if we're fortunate enough, we'll go hunting in an area like this, where it's all orange, and we're looking for a black rock and hopefully we'll find it. Once they get that rock, they then pass it to me, and I chop it into lots of tiny pieces. So once I've chopped up my rock and given it to lots of different people around the world, because everyone does lots of different things with them, I put them in a microscope. So basically just zooming in really, really far. It's just a magnifying glass that, in a microscope, basically. I use a different kind of microscope. It's an electron microscope. So instead of putting light on your sample, I fire electrons at my sample. That microscope can tell me lots of different things 
about the materials that I'm looking at. So one of the techniques that I'm really excited about at the moment is not only can it tell me what mineral it is that I'm looking at, so the chemistry that's involved, it can tell me what orientation each single grain is in. So if, for example, I have an impact event, all the crystals underneath are going to start to align with one another because we've had compression. Now, that image on the bottom left is color coded to show me the orientation of those crystals. And because it's all different, I know it hasn't been squashed. So how does that actually answer my question? So my main question was, how does our solar system form? I can tell if it's been squashed, if this meteorite has been squashed because of those crystals coming together. We can tell if it's been heated or melted because we might end up with some fluids in our rock. I can tell if it has been changed by water or by fluid. Um, I can tell how, how hot or how cold that rock was when it formed. And we can also tell how old that rock is as well. So we can start to build a map around our solar system for when things started to form. So planetary science is really an amal amalgamation of a huge number of different STEM fields. So I am a geologist, so I use physics, I use maths, and I use chemistry every single day. Uh, there's people in my team who are engineers and they're using physics again, they're using maths again, but in completely different ways. There are people who code in my team who that is their sole responsibility is to make sure that our systems are working perfectly and that relies entirely on them being able to code um, well um, so that we basically can actually find meteorites out in the desert. So in high school I was really interested in STEM subjects specifically maths and physics. I did really enjoy them but I also found them fairly easy. They just clicked with me. And so I think I got some of my enjoyment out of the fact that I didn't have to work really hard to understand it. It was somehow, it just made sense in my head. Whereas things like English, I really struggled with. I really struggled with writing essays. Um, I absolutely adored geography because I got to go outside. I got to learn with my own eyes rather than from learning from a textbook. So I got to learn through experience, which is really important as well. I think definitely try lots of different things. Um, this is certainly not where I thought I was going to end up. It's certainly not what I imagined when I was in high school, even in my early 20s when I was finishing my undergraduate degree. Um, but I was exposed to this field purely by chance and um, I was very fortunate in that. And that was through trying lots and lots of different things. Um, so to really see where your passion is and you know, your passion will take you a long way.